Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are today. Uh, hello and welcome to the webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lane Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar on TWI facilitated by Gerard Berenson and Carla Lattenhowers. They are co-founders and certified TWI trainers of the TWI Institute Netherlands and Germany. We do have time for a short question and answer session at the end of this webinar. So if you have a question in English, please type that up in your GoToWebinar control panel and I will read it to Carla and Gerard. If your question is in Dutch or German, Please uh, type this also in your control panel that you do have a question that you'd like to ask in your language. And at the end of this presentation, I will turn on your microphone and you will be able to ask that in your language. Um, also note that this session will be recorded if you want to refer back to it later. So for now, I will turn it over to Gerard and Carla. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, this is Gerard. Um, talking uh, about the TWI methods and especially the connection uh, with Lean will give you uh, an introduction on this subject. Uh, it's based on our learning and our experience from the last years. We have been working in Lean and TWI and we would like to share this learning with you. Um, it's about continuous improvement and especially the subject that continuous improvement should be daily work for supervisors um, and it's not uh, about subjects that are in the classroom or a lot of theory. TWI is a, a learn by doing approach and that fits very well in many lean areas. However, uh, there's one lean principle that we have seen a lot in the area uh, where we work, uh, where uh, a key element, respect for people, is or missing or not well understood or difficult to use. Uh, at least there are people elements that are not easy, as we see. And we have learned through our experience that the TWI methods contribute a lot to this subject. And therefore, it's often uh, called the missing link in lean or the human side of lean as we use it. Um, then, um, to give you a short impression, uh, today we are working across the globe. The TWI Institute headquarters is in New York, in Liverpool, but we have global partners around the world, as you can see on this map covering already many countries uh, where we have requests or needs to help with TWI methods. And uh, to make the connection with uh, Lean, uh, our initial question is, does your Lean project or your Lean process or your Lean transformation deliver your planned results or your expected results? Let's start on uh, building this picture, building this graph where we start from current practice, uh, the, the average of current practice, because what normally is in a starting situation is not stable at all. It's not such a nice straight line, but we only put the average in. Then there will be, uh, connected with the lean initiative, a certain lean event. Whatever is the initial improvement uh, project or Kaizen event that you organize, you have uh, scheduled and expected a certain improvement in performance. Performance could be in quality, safety, productivity, cost reduction. Uh, from this, uh, you expect a new standard and huh? you will develop to a new standard. And this is going to repeat uh, for the second lean event, second improvement activity, and even the third. So this is more or less the sequence of items that happens in, uh, in your program, in your Lean program. And we could visualize this as a kind of improvement speed for this performance area. And it's, uh, let us say, the planned improvement speed. 
Um, however, what we see in uh, reality, it's not like this always. We see some some uh, very specific, uh, and uh, it's not specific for uh, one project. We see it in many projects. I've experienced this in my own uh, history, in my own uh, practice, uh, being a production manager, being a maintenance manager in different areas. The reality is that things go back. So we expect uh, from the lean event we had a nice improvement, we achieved that one, and then we expect the new standard will be kept. However, when you come back weeks, uh, some weeks or some months later, things uh, tend to go back, uh, to slide down, and the performance is going down. And when you put this on the different uh, areas where we have scheduled, even when we put the second lean event with the same improvement performance uh, as we had before. We put now in to see uh, the, the new expected standard. We normally see this sliding back behavior is coming back to the second and even to the third uh, event again. Um, that doesn't mean that we are not working on it. That doesn't mean that it always happens. But it's a kind of behavior that we see in many lean transformations, in many lean initiatives. And the final result of that is that, in fact, there is a, a, an actual improvement speed. And it's much lower when you uh, look over time. So it's not only uh, when you look at the first event. It's even better than the expected uh, improvement speed. But uh, when we look over time, then we see that the actual improvement speed is lower. And it's mainly due to this sliding down um, after achieving a nice result. And every time we do a lean event, and we have another uh, Kaizen uh, project, and we achieve nice results, the same uh, increase in performance as we have in our plan, but still it's sliding down again. And the result is lower performance. Um, then let us have a look where TWI methods could help in this. Um, the most important thing and, and, and the fundamental part of TWI is in keeping the standard. When we have achieved a new standard through this lean event, through this Kaizen workshop, we want to keep it like that. And there is, uh, at, there are at least two elements, two modules uh, from TWI methods. One is job instruction. Job instruction is focusing on stabilizing the process through uh, developing work standards and train them effectively to uh, all the people that have to execute work from this uh, area. And job relations is creating and keeping a positive environment. Positive environment means uh, the work relations between uh, employees uh, in a team, in a shift, between shifts, but also between workers and leaders, between workers and team leaders, between workers and management. Um, when that positive environment is actively developed and kept, there is a better environment to stabilize processes. And um, we have seen and learned through many um, cases already that this is fundamental. So uh, this kind of behavior will be kept uh, when you develop positive environment, good work relations at the beginning of your lean initiative. Uh, they will improve even over time. So uh, it's easier to develop standard work for uh, the new work that was develop developed in the second lean event, in the second uh, Kaizen workshop, and the third as well. So uh, you can use this. And as a result from this, we can see that uh, the, the improvement speed, the actual improvement speed, is fitting with the original plan. Of course, this is a theoretical uh, description of the process, but um, what we want to uh, put focus on in this one is that in many 
lean programs, the focus is on the lean events. So when do we plan uh, a Kaizen workshop or a specific improvement project for a certain area to improve that performance? And when that is done later on, there's a next one and there's a next one. But in between, how do we uh, maintain the standard? How do we maintain the, the new standard that we have developed? That is often a big, big question. And this area is what we call the people area. So you get the return on investment eh? clearly delivered from the improvement project, but when this is sliding down over time, you will lose your profits from the project again. And that is what we uh, have learned already through many cases when there is uh, as well this positive environment and there is a, an area where we have standard work developed from the the lean event, so not from outside, but from the participants and the, the employees that worked in, in this uh, Kaizen project, they develop the new standard work and then it's trained through trained trainers to other people in the, in the department. We can keep the pace. We will uh, arrive at this improvement speed. Um, so in this area, we can say uh, lean tools and instruments, uh, they generate the improvement results through these lines, through these three events. Um, and the TWI methods, JI and JR, they deliver fundamentals. They uh, are the fundament in, uh, they are really a foundation in the lean program to ensure keeping to the standard. And, well, this is not new for us, for none of us, because even Teichi Ono, at the beginning of developing TP, uh, TPS, his Toyota production system, he said already that without standards, there cannot be Kaizen, there cannot be any improvement. And when we look at that, there is even uh, one part of TWI, JM, job methods included, um, that can help us even improve that one. Um, we use the same situation, the same example. We have this uh, lean event delivering uh, improved performance. We can keep to the standard, but when we start then job methods, uh, and that's uh, in fact uh, the predecessor of Kaizen, then we can slightly improve our performance, uh, keeping to the standard, but even improving with uh, studying many details. That means we can uh, have a higher performance and uh, also this behavior is repeated. So we have another and uh, we continued uh, JM after this event was standardized and trained. We continue with our job methods, improvement work and in the end we end up with a accelerated improvement speed. It's even faster than the original lean without job methods. Well, when we summarize uh, all of this, there is a, an institute, a global institute, the Shingo uh, Institute, and they have researched many lean programs. And one of the conclusions is that at least 85% uh, of all lean projects fill in the initial implementation. That doesn't mean that all the lean initiatives fill, but in the first, uh, in the initial implementation. Uh, and there will be a restart, or uh, we try again, those kind of things. Why is that? We discovered from uh, this research that there are three elements uh, clearly linked to uh, TWI. Lacking work, work standards, so uh, companies speak about uh, we have work standards, but it's mainly on paper and it's not in practice. <coughs> we speak about work standards when really the work uh, from uh, several employees, in fact all the employees that have to execute that job, is according to standard. Uh, in the what, in the how, and the people understand also why they have to do it in that way. The second area is insufficient respect and trust between employees, between employees and uh, leaders and management, but also from management to employees. 
and that's uh, as you can understand a clear uh, job relations area the first one is the job instruction area second is the job relations area and the last one uh, many programs focus on tools and methods and not enough on employees and that's again fitting with the graph that I showed just before the people element when we don't focus on people uh, and to develop a positive environment and when we don't develop standards and effective train them to our employees the performance will slide down what can we learn from Toyota in this one because well, in fact they are the mother of lean so to say since uh, 51 Toyota is using TWI methods and they are fundamental at Toyota in uh, developing their talent TWR methods are proven technology. They are developed and implemented in the US during World War II. In fact, developed already before, but really implemented and used during World War II. And these founders of TWI, they had to find solid principles of human nature that work every time, inspire dedication, uh, because uh, the, the skilled workers went to the front and they had other people coming to the factories to work but they were not educated for the job to be executed and every day they receive new workers, different workers so they had to find a way to uh, inspire those workers in such a way that they perform uh, according to expectation and uh, they wanted to produce goods uh, first time right and in service as well uh, for example in hospitals to enable that you need to have leadership that is able to manage these challenges and uh, therefore they will strengthen teamwork as well that's what we need and these uh, last two elements are about the positive environment that we need to develop these were the challenges and uh, when we look at these in fact they are not so uh, different from what we see today in factories when we look at frontline team leaders or uh, shift leaders or shift supervisors they have the same challenges as uh, those TWI founders had during World War II and it's possible after the World War huh, the TWI initiative in the US was more or less stopped but uh, for example in Japan not only but uh, especially in Japan there were uh, TWI master trainers uh, taken to Japan to train uh, TWI methods for the reconstruction, the rebuilding of Japan. And um, Toyota was one of them since '51, and even today they use uh, job relations to develop team leaders. They use job instruction to develop Toyota standard work and you can read it in uh, for example Toyota Talent and there's a lot of documentation at Toyota where they describe how they develop their people and sometimes the word TWI is mentioned and mainly not but it's exactly the TWI material that is behind these uh, these policies TWI thinking uh, a good supervisor according to TWI has five needs um, the left side of this picture is the knowledge uh, so we have two knowledge aspects two knowledge uh, needs for a good supervisor he needs to have knowledge of work in the area where he is leading and he needs to have knowledge of responsibilities and um, that doesn't mean he uh, should be the specialist in work uh, he should know all the details and all the best practices of the work but he should know about the work he should have an understanding and uh, perhaps he also has done certain jobs in the work so that he has a good understanding of the work to be done responsibilities he needs to understand otherwise you don't know where you're responsible for and what decisions you can make these need to be connected these knowledge area these two knowledge uh, aspects of uh, the five needs are company related specific company even without a global company within a global company you have uh, different sites and responsibilities could be different from site to site or even the content of work could be different from site to site that means you can only learn this 
in a specific company. Then we go to the right side. We go to the skills. Uh, there are three skills in the five needs of good supervisors. The skill of instructing, the skill of improving, methods, and the skill of leading. These uh, skills can be learned, in fact, from every, for every team leader, for every supervisor, and they're common for every supervisor. So when you've learned them in one company or in one area of your company and you will be transferred to another work area, you can still use these uh, skills. Skills you learn by doing, by exercising. And when you are in a different area, you need to learn about the new work and responsibilities, but you take your skills with you. In the middle, we have safety, and safety is connected to all of these five needs. <coughs> there are three training programs from TWI for these three skills. The skill in instructing is learned, is uh, delivered from TWI through job instruction training. Skill in improving methods through job methods training, and the skill in leading uh, through job relations training. And I will uh, focus now on job instruction first. <coughs> what is TWI job instruction? TWI job instruction is the way to get a person to quickly remember to do a job. So it's one person, one job, to do uh, this job correctly, safely and conscientiously. That means uh, after the training through job instruction, the person should be able to do the job first time right and not forget anymore. That's the aim of job instruction. That's how we train people. And we, we see in practice that it works. The standards that we train are developed from the people, from the experienced people in that area. And that's what Teichi Oni also said. Workers have developed them. It's a four-step method. Like every uh, J method in the TWI program, it's a four-step method, and you can see on the right side, on the blue card, you can see uh, the detail of the four steps. We will not go into the details this time, but it's a four-step method. First, you prepare the worker, and prepare the worker in this way, that he is uh, open and willing to receive the training. Uh, step two is present the, work, uh, the operation, and during this, the instructor will perform the task and explain step by step the information. The trainer will repeat three times and step by step he will add more information. Then it comes to step three, tryout performance. Then the worker, eh, the new worker or the experienced worker who is learning a new task, he will, do, uh, he will execute the task four times. First time without commenting and then three times in the same rhythm as the trainer did. Um, and the trainer is, of course, observing in detail. And when there is a small mistake, the trainer will correct the learner. And when this is going perfect, so uh, the learner is showing that he or she can execute the task and he or she understands the task in all the details, then the trainer is going to step four, which is the follow-up step. So it's not immediately stopped as soon as the worker has shown, I can do it. No. Then there is a follow-up step, how the training is closed. This is a very important step uh, to understand from the learner also how the process of training is finished. And the key element of job instruction is at the bottom of the card, if the worker hasn't learned, the instructor hasn't taught. And that's key for job instruction, that every uh, participant in our job instruction training learns from the very first moment on Monday already. The target group for uh, GI training is in fact all those employees who train new uh, colleagues. And um, you can see here in certain areas, certain companies, it will be the supervisors, the first line leaders like team leaders or group leaders, but it, uh, and it's mainly uh, experienced operators or experienced technicians or experienced laboratory technicians who train new colleagues. Uh, and that means these people we want to see in the GI training because they will train their new colleagues. That's the target group uh, for GI. And 
And uh, here's some results from uh, JI compared to other training methods, from telling alone to showing alone to combined showing and telling, and then job instruction. And job instruction is, in fact, a structured method for showing, telling, doing yourself, including, including the repeating from the trainer and the learner. And then you see the big difference in the memory afterwards. And of course, we also have some tools where you can even, after those three days, uh, because it's not only training, you know, also uh, work at, uh, the, uh, at the, the shop floor in this job, how you can uh, maintain this 92% or even higher. That's what we learn. Okay, I'm going to take over, and the uh, next topic will be, we saw about job instruction, one of the TWI methods of uh, the, the methods, and it was based on lacking on work standards, while lean implementations often don't work well. The second part, this has more to do with the insufficient respect and trust, so the TWI job relation part. If you look at the definition, it's, I like the way of this definition, it's good supervision gets the people in the department to do what the supervisor needs to be done, when it should be done, and the way the supervisor needs to be done, but because the people themselves want to do it. So in the job relation, the basic is that supervisors, their way of working is through people, and all people are individuals. So because of this engagement of people, we get things done, and this is the main mantra in the job relation part. What do we learn with job relation? We learn supervisors, team leaders, how to act with problems they have with people, and even better also, what can you do to prevent these problems? So that's the major part. And as with job instruction, it has four steps. One of the things is to how to handle a problem is a part of an analysis way. We learn supervisors to help themselves by coaching through those fear four steps. And what I would like to show you is that in step one, one of the major things we notice during training is that talk to the people, talk to the individuals concerned and get their opinions and feelings is one of the things people say, this is what we are lacking. So this is where we need to go more to find out the real reason for a problem. So then we can weigh and decide and take action on this. Yeah? So this is a way of a coaching system which is a bit different than for the job instruction, and that's why this is needed to be implemented more bottom up, uh, top down, sorry. So it's a kind of the, the supervisor management first has to learn so that their supervisors can be coached by management. So this is really important if you start job relations that you start to do this top down. And it's not always needed to do, but sometimes the, the situation in a company says you have to make sure that first you have a good situation in place before you can start job instruction. So this is often the, uh, the, the question you have to ask yourself. The last program will be the job methods part. If we look at job methods, what would be the, it's the third part of the, the way of to learn skills for supervisors. And it has to do with the tools and the methods to have not only tools and methods, but to use it with the people, with the employees, so that Lean can work. If you look at the definition, it says, how can we make best use of the manpower, machine, and material now available? Many people recognize this part of the program as, as a kind of a SMET, but also this topic has four steps. It, uh, you see on the both sides of the card, we see the four steps of how to analyze the current method, to question every detail, and then develop the new method and to apply it to the new method. The difference, and if you look in more detail of step two and three, you're going to see things or many people who recognize lean, we're going to see that they uh, recognize some part of SMET in it. So it's uh, many people say, yeah, this is what I recognize. And yes, it's correct. I think the main difference with job methods is that supervisors learn to ask the questions to the people. So together with the people, they can develop small improvements. So this is also applicable more on each little detail of the work. And that makes it a more different than if you only use it for changeovers. And this is uh, what Toyota is not doing. I think this is mainly the basis how SMET started to develop. And as with job instruction, you see 
that how to implement job methods, it can be also bottom up. You see the most common is that we learn supervisors how to use this tool so they can use it with their operators, but we often have a lot of operators in to join to find out better ways of working to use material and methods. So if I wrap up all together, we can see the three programs, but they all are interconnected to each other. Yeah, we need job relations, we need trust and, and good uh, culture to get instruction done. We need good instruction so we get a stable situation to go do improvements on. So that's all, all important and also we, we, if we don't have good relations we cannot improve either. So these are the principles how they are interconnecting with each other. And if you like to read more about it there are quite more books more and more coming who you can see how these things work. Um, I'm at the moment reading the book Leading with, with Respect, which I think is a very good connection where Lean is connected to those daily work so that the difference will be we can improve daily on a daily basis with the people, with respect for the people and have on the long term a better result in the situation. So I had to run into for the timing, but mm -hmm. it's uh, five o'clock. If uh, people have questions, we would like to know. I don't know, Lynn, if you got some questions from people somewhere over the world. Yeah, um, I haven't seen any questions come in yet so far. Um, is there, if someone wanted to reach out to you guys, is there a contact information that they could do that to reach out to you for questions? Yes, at the moment there's the slide on now. If there are people have other questions, you can also always send us an email. Okay. Um, and uh, we will get an answer to you yeah. to uh, send. And if people have questions now, they are also free to do yes. in whichever language it will be. Even if, but it has to be English, Dutch, or the German. Well, perfect. All right. Well, um, since I haven't seen any questions come in, we'll go ahead and wrap up for today then. So Gerard and Carla, thank you both for facilitating our session today. Mm -hmm. If you all want to hear more from Gerard and Carla, they will actually be at the TWI Kata Summit, which is in Hamburg, Germany, and that will be happening uh, November 30th through December 1st this year. So please visit www.twiandkatasummit.eu to learn more. So to wrap up, I want to remind everyone that today's webinar is being recorded. So look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. And feel free to share this throughout your organization. So thank you, Gerard. Thank you, Carla. And thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye. Thank you. You too, Jacqueline. Thank you very much. Thank you.